Hi guys and welcome back for another video. So I'm going to play Hushabai from the clarinet grade 1 book. I think this is the nicest piece in the whole grade 1 book. It's such a lovely legato piece to play. I think young players are really going to enjoy it. So stay tuned and I'm going to show you how to make it sound really awesome. Here we go. Okay, so you've heard the music, let's get into a bit of the detail. So I like this kind of piece, though it's, it's one of those tunes that you can play sort of in a one in a bar when you get to really know it, or a three in a bar. Um, so what I mean by that is, there's three beats in a bar, so you've got the very clear... Um, da, 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 um, bum. So you've got that pulse there, but you've also got the... Dee, da, da, dum, dum, dum. So you might want to practice it in the two different tempos with a metronome just to get really familiar with that. So in the crotchet speed. You could even, I think, just maybe slightly tongue the first note in each bar, which, you know, which might be quite good practice at really helping you to bring out the, the beat notes of the, the main beats in the bar. So if I was to play this in one beat per bar, it would be something like this. But now if I times that by three and play it in crotchets, it should sound the same, but it probably won't sound exactly the same because I'll be thinking in beats, crotchet beats. So now in the quicker crotchet speed. So that sounds quicker now, but I can assure you it isn't. It's exactly three times the speed of that other, of the other tempo. So it's good practice just to be able to play it in the two different tempos. I think it's nicer to be able to feel the slower tempo and then it gives you a bit more freedom within that bar. So play this with your best possible sound and enjoy those subtle dynamic changes as it goes through the phrases. And remember of course that true legato playing isn't just about not tonguing the notes. It's more to do with joining up the notes really smoothly. So think about the legato playing as, as keep, keep the fingers really close to the instrument and join the, those notes up as smoothly as you can. Just because you're not tonguing the notes doesn't necessarily mean that you're playing it legato. Because if you, if you play it like that with a lot, of, a lot of finger effort, it might not actually sound very smooth out the instrument. I wonder if I could demonstrate that. So if, you play, if I play... <laughs> so I think you get the idea. I exaggerated it a bit there and ended up squeaking. Um, so try and keep the finger work as close, to you, close as you can to the instrument and keep that really nice and smooth. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to um, fix that now and play it properly, aren't I? So.
That actually brings up another discussion, doesn't it? That, that A to the D, just watch that interval there that you don't squeak on that, just like I did. Okay, so I'm gonna replay the performance track now and I'm gonna turn down the clarinet part, try and play along with that piano part as clearly as you can, get it as smooth as you can and get those dynamics in there. Here we go. One, two, three. Okay, that's a wrap for Hushabai. So I hope you've learned a few things on that video. Hope you've learned how to play really smooth and quietly. And of course you learn that teachers squeak as well. You know, everyone squeaks on the clarinet. It's just one of those things, you know. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, of course, then hit that like button and leave me a complimentary comment in that section below. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye.